Hi, welcome back to the Barney Bookshelf. Today I'm going to be talking about Karen Miller's The Innocent Mage, um, book one of the Kingmaker, Kingbreaker series. Well, yeah, series. Um, loved these books. Um, uh, they are set in Lur, it's a land that's inhabited by the Oaken, who are the original natives of the land. And the Doranen, who fled their um, original kingdom due to a war that was devastating it. Um, Miller doesn't actually describe a whole lot of how the initial interactions between the Olken and Doranen um, played out, but ultimately the Doranen did end up. Uh, becoming the ruling class, um, largely due to their magic, that um, through part of the bargaining that took place, their leader also has to use to control the weather of Lur, um, which in part also fuels what's known as Barl's uh, Wall a magical barrier protecting everybody in Lur from the nightmarish horde that chased the Doranen out of their original kingdom. The book is pretty interesting in that it actually showcases a lot of our real world racial tensions. Um, while many of the Ulken look up to the Doranen, there is plenty of them who see how much the Doranen look down on them and lord over them, kind of treat them like they're little more than beasts. Um, but, so, that's a little bit of the backstory for the world. Um, our main character is Asher, who is an Oaken. Um, he grew up as a fisherman um, along the coast of Lur, which is one of the few areas where the Dorn and magic controlling the weather doesn't work quite the same. Um, there are some of the few people in the kingdom who tru still truly understand how powerful raw, t untamed storms can be. Um, but he um, has a fairly large family, youngest of seven brothers, and with their traditions, um, he would automatically get the small slice out of any profits from the family fish, uh, fishing business and his brother severely looked down on him, um, barely take care of their father and so he decides to basically sneak away from home, go to the capital city, Dorana, um, to make his fortune and plans to return the following year to start his own fishing business and take care of his father. Um, but so it's following him, he goes to the capital city, ends up making uh, fairly quick connections. Um, ends up befriending the Doran and Prince, Gar, um, and finds his situation changing very rapidly. Um, yeah, so. I'm not sure how much to really say more without giving too much away, so I'll leave it at that. One of the things I actually love the most about the book is Karen Miller does an excellent job writing both genders of characters. Um, far too many authors are obviously good at writing their own gender and tend to just use stereotypes for the opposite genders. Um, or even worse yet, writing the opposite gender is more as fantasies. Um, but she actually does a really amazing job fleshing out 
each of the characters regen uh, regardless of gender. Um, so, obviously brought up the main character, Asher. There's Gar, who's the Dornan prince. Um, one of the few Dornan who truly respects the Oaken. And, uh, that's something else I could bring up. Um, he does largely respect the Oaken more than most Dornan because, unlike most Dornan, he was actually born without the ability to use magic. Um, generally speaking, the Oaken do not have magic. I mean, there is a group that's supposed to be safeguarding secrets of Oaken magic, but there is never actually any instances shown where Oaken can actually do magic in the book, so that may or, they may or may not really be guarding some secret magic that nobody knows about. Um, but so, Gar not having magic is more akin to the Oaken and, than most Dornan. Um, um, well, I did I did bring up that. Karen Miller didn't give us a whole lot of how the two um, groups turned into what they were currently. While she did give us some history, she didn't give us that history. She did build the rest of the world quite amazingly. Um, large majorities of the kingdom aren't described, but it's because nothing in the book takes place in those areas, but the areas that stuff does happen, she describes wonderfully. Um, I, I actually probably would like having some more of the history of the world. Um, not necessarily in this particular book. That, I would like the ability to look into the history of the world more, because it definitely drew me in, and uh, I do have to warn, this: the first book definitely ends on a cliffhanger if you decide to read it. You probably want the second book ready for as soon as you finish the first one. Well, she has Kingmaker, Kingbreaker. She also actually continued in the world, so there is more than just the two books for the series. While the, those two books make Kingmaker, Kingbreaker, she also has Fisherman's Children and Blight of Mages, which I think does actually cover more of the history. Though I don't think it actually includes um, as much of the founding of Lur with Dornan and Oaken together. I tend to actually end up looking at the Oaken very similar to Hobbits. They're not really, they're still the same height and everything as the Dornan, but in my mind I tend to end up thinking more Elves and Hobbits. <laughs> um, That is one area where she, she doesn't describe as much. There, She does clarify that there is a difference in appearance between Oaken and Dornan, mainly in hair color. is the main thing that really stands out, is the difference. Um, Dornan do tend to have more elegant features, hence the reason I tend to associate them with elves. Um, Oaken are described more as hardy folk, so I tend to lean towards hobbits, maybe a little bit of dwarf, but their personality is much more hobbit-like in nature. Um, they're de definitely earthy, but not mining earthy. The majority of the book, um, very easily a slow burn of a book. There are some small action areas, but you know, no war or anything like that. It's just more along the lines of 
political and personal conflicts. Um, definitely a little bit odd for most fantasy books. So if you're more of a reader wanting lots and lots of action, probably not the best book for you. You might still enjoy it, but if you're more along the types where you do enjoy more dialogue um, and personal conflict over actual fights, this is a wonderful book for you. Um, I tend to lean toward more towards uh, actual fights, but far too often they're so limited in detail that I don't really end up truly reading the fight as much as, okay, a fight happened. On to the next part. So I have grown to where I like books like this more, where it is more heavily an actual personal conflict than actual, you know, say, sword fights. It's also a little bit more realistic. Most people, of course, don't have their lives filled with fights. It's, you know, even in D&D, you're really spending most of your time traveling and planning. That's more along the core of these books. They're not focusing on the tropes of constant fighting. It's actually quite, uh, quite nice to see that more. Um, that being said, the next book does definitely delve more into actual fights. Um, I will definitely be doing a review on it once I finish. I've already started it. Um, I, I couldn't wait to start it. Uh, as I said, the first one ends on a major cliffhanger. Um, it's like the, the big bad is introduced in like the second or third chapter from the end of the book don't even really get to truly see them or know anything about them until the end. Um, so it's definitely a big build up to it and then you have to wait for the next book. I probably would have absolutely hated reading these waiting for the second one to come out. I picked them up after both of them were out. Um, actually I think even after um, the first of the Fisherman Children's books were out. Um, yes, I've absolutely fell in love with them. I'm actually looking to get the rest of Karen Miller's books that I don't already have. Um, she does an awesome job writing them. Um, and it's actually been hard not relating them to current events. It's actually quite relevant to them. Love the book. As long as you can enjoy reading a book that's not heavily on fight scenes, I definitely recommend it. Um, thanks for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, have a great day.